Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the buzzed artist. And today we are going to be painting this really cool fir branches. This is totally in the Christmas spirit and I am totally feeling this. So what are we gonna be using for this painting is simply an 11 by 14 canvas, as well as a couple of brushes and paint. I will include a list of all of those in the description below so that you'll have it for reference. But y'all, I am so excited for this season. Not only because we're going to be getting a new member of our family, our little girl, but also it's Christmas, it's nostalgia, it's all of the movies, it's all of the good feels, right? Can't go wrong with that. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. What we're going to be doing first and foremost is to lay down the background of our painting. This is actually the pretty simple part of this whole entire painting. We are going to be using an 11 by 14 canvas. I actually, this was actually another, an older painting that I had re-gessoed so that I can repurpose it for this very painting. But you can use any canvas that's just pre-gessoed. It will do the trick just nicely. The first thing I'm going to do, we're gonna lay down the background of our painting here. And I wanna get the largest brush that I have in my arsenal, which is my three quarter inch flat wash brush. Now we're just gonna lay down the first color. I'm just looking at the reference picture of our pine needles. And I noticed that the background, it looks like it is almost all black, but there are tinges of green in it. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna dip my brush in some water. Then I'm just gonna go and grab some black. And then I'm gonna grab some of that that Prussian green and mix it so that I can get a nice muddy Prussian green black. I don't want it to be totally black. So once I have that, then I can go ahead and cover my entire canvas with this color. Now I'm kind of going in every which direction, honestly, so it doesn't really matter what you decide to do but I'm kind of just kind of swishing it. I do like um, like a sideways motion with my brush, just to help me get that. And of course I dip with water every now and then just to make sure that my brush is nice and hydrated. We're just gonna cover the entire canvas with this color. And I wanna keep it dark because I really wanna create that contrast later when we add in our pine needles themselves. I keep wanting to call them pine cones. Pine needles, Amanda.
And of course, I'm just going back in with the black in certain areas, like on the corners, just to help me get more of that like super contrast, more like a vignette look going on. So you get this really nice, rich, rich, dark color. And if you're dealing with canvas, you want to make sure you get the sides of your canvas as well. Unless, of course, you're planning on framing this, then in that case, you don't have to do this part. But I always like to do it because if ever you don't have a frame, you just want to put this up on your wall or give it to a friend you're pretty much done. So be sure to do all sides. Now once your background has sufficiently dried, I'm just taking a, a quick little peek on my canvas. It's a little bit tacky, that's okay. Um, ideally you'd want it to be as dry as possible so it's not like super super tacky but this is to the point where it's not going to interfere with our painting so we can move on what we're going to do now is make the pine needle needles themselves which I think is going to be really fun and really cool I'm super excited so what we're going to do is we're going to now grab our number 10 shader brush this brush is really good for making those very nice sharp lines that we're looking for and then we can always go down to our detail brush but again if you're kind of feeling like mm, I kind of want to use my detail brush for this go for it up to you okay so we're going to try to make the colors for our pine needle so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a palette knife you can always use your brush if you want to and I'm gonna to go to the pale green now now I'm not gonna use straight up pale green it's a very unnatural looking color that's why I kind of wanted to combine it with a little bit of raw sienna and mix that up a little bit just so we have a good appropriate color to use. Now you can always look up the reference image, just keep comparing that, go back and forth, take a look and just make sure that you know it's, the, it's going towards the color that you like. Excellent. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. So I do wanna brighten that up a little bit. And I really want this to stand out against the um, background here that we have, right? It's, and you can tell, you can tell it's really gonna start to pop. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, here we go. We're gonna go grab our shader brush, dip it in water, and then I'm just going to load my brush with our color. Okay, I don't want it dripping with paint, but nicely coated, okay? So we're going to make our pine needles. If you look at the pine needles, it's really just a series of lines that all kind of emanate out from one center. So I'm going to choose that center where it's gonna start, which I think I'm gonna put it like, I'm gonna put it like right over here, I think. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a line going down like this with the tip of my brush. Another line, another line, another line. And basically, I'm just gonna make a series of lines and then going down like this. You don't need to cover everything, but because the shadows are already from your background, you just need to add in the highlights, which would be your pine needles. So I'm just gonna go down to the end of where I want it to go. And I'm just constantly making those, those straight lines kind of emanating out. All right. 
Same thing's kind of going to happen on this side. It's going to go down. You got some lines coming down like so. Some coming off to the side like this. How cool does that look? And then of course you can always just go back up. Thicken it. I feel like you need to add more. Okay, <laughs> now you have it. You just made your, your first pine needle branch. How exciting is that? Okay, and once you got that, you pretty much got the gist of it. Now you can go back and forth. If you want to move down to your detail brush, you can totally do that. If you're not feeling that great about using a shader brush, you can totally just go ahead and use your detail brush just to help you make even more of those like finer tips of the pine needle. Which I'm actually really, really living for right now. Just like that. And of course I'm making sure my brush is always nice and wet but lubricated with um, enough water so that the paint can carry very nicely. Okay, and then we just continue. So let's do another set of needles and this time that was gonna be one that's coming off to the side right here, okay? So if it helps, you can always turn your canvas over this way just so that you can get the right angle going, but it's gonna be the same principle. I'm gonna kind of leave a little room on the top here and then it's all going to emanate from one corner or from just one side like that and then same story we got some in the center that is going down And they're kind of like overlapping in some cases. So you got the center parts that have mostly lines that are kind of overlapping, kind of going straight. Not looking to cover everything. I want to still maintain that illusion that there is like shadow underneath. Then, onto the side. It spreads out even more. Okay, so really have fun with this part. Get, get them to look, it, it's almost like you're making it very furry looking. That's kind of the look you're going for here. Oh, that is utter perfection. Utter perfection. I love it. Turn it right back over. There you have it. Let's do another one. This time we'll have one that's kind of in the back here. Now to make it appear like it's more in the back, um, we're not going to paint the whole thing in, but just certain parts that look like they're kind of kind of coming in a little bit. So we're not gonna start right at, at the point where it intersects, just we're going out a little bit more. And then it's gonna kind of go down like this. Look how pretty that is. So we just got some bits over here.
just like that. And, and if you wanted to just blurry these up just a little bit, what you can do is you can grab your, your three quarter inch brush, make sure it's mostly dry. Um, you can always run some of the extra water on your towel or on your palm of your hand. And then very lightly, just tap it on the areas of the paint that you kind of want to blur out a little bit, just tap it. And what happens is it's going to evaporate some of that paint and carry it out so it's not as contrasty, but it still looks like it's there. So it just like blurries it out a little bit. Okay, awesome. Little tricks of the trade, people. Just like that. Awesome. Okay. Let's do some more. So basically from here on out, you're just gonna be adding in more and more of your needles. So I'm gonna do another one. This one is gonna be slightly lower than this one here. So again, it's gonna start at, at a, uh, a tip point like this. Some parts flare out. So again, the middle, middle needles. Kind of straight. And as it kind of goes to the side. Kind of flares out. Don't be afraid to play here a little bit. If you want to put some extra, some extra like zingy needles coming out to the side like this, you are perfectly entitled to do that. This is your painting after all. You can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> Hell, if you want to make it bigger, make it bigger. Go for it. I'm just adding suggestions for you. And of course, if I were to turn this back over, I do want to show that this uh, needle is over this one. So I'm just going to paint needles in this direction so that it appears that this looks like it's over that. Okay, so let's uh, let's keep going. Let's make another one. Got one over here. I'm not going to turn it this time, but you can feel free to turn your canvas if you'd like. I'm just going to make another set of needles. Out to the side here. I'm just dipping in water to make sure the brush is nicely lubricated, giving me those really, really nice, clean, crisp edges. All right, we'll do another one, kind of close. Again, same kind of shapes. This one probably on the smaller side, to be honest with you. Okay, and then let's do another one kind of a little higher up. Okay. 
And notice I'm not really, um, really putting as much detail as I go up. I want to imitate like that focus of the camera lens kind of going out of focus as it comes out this way. Okay. I like that. Okay, and then there's just a few that are kind of like around here. They're not entirely that visible. But I'm just going to add them in. Now this is kind of like more like a blob look. So once I kind of lay down that color, I'm going to again grab that 3 quarter inch brush. And I'm just going to push the color like this. So it kind of looks like it just blends and fades. I'm going to do the same up here with these needles. I'm just going to fade them out. Fade them out. Excellent. Very good. And there's going to be some more blob thingies over here and over here. So you're just going to lay it down first with your detail brush if you'd like and then you just uh, dull them down with your three quarter inch brush. Again, just to show that there's there's color, there's some stuff happening, but you know, they're, they're quite blurry. You know, in fact, I can even go in with my three quarter inch brush, very, very lightly grab some color and just, just kind of dry brush a little bit over. Honestly, you don't need to grab a lot on your brush. I barely have any on my brush here. It's just enough. Okay. You know what? I think I might just add a bit more pine needles. You can never have too many pine needles. <laughs> And I'm just going to do maybe some faux needles. They don't exactly appear in the in the drawing, but or in the picture itself, but I kind of I kind of feeling I want to I want to show some here and there. They're just appearing. Now this is I'm not going as detailed as I was before with those other pine needles. Just kind of adding them here and there. Okay, just have fun with it. Play, play with the, the branches. Make them longer, make them longer. There's nothing wrong with overlapping some strokes, 
with the same color that you were doing before. Nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I'm just going to go in some of the other crevices here. Just add in more, more needles. Because why not? I'm feeling good. This is looking really, really pretty. going to vary the the tips of the pine needle just so it's not always like pointing all in the right in the same direction this one the tip kind of is veering a little this way this one is veering this way isn't that pretty Gorgeous. I feel like I wanted to add a little break in there, so I'm just going to go back in with the black that we use for the background. Just help break up those parts a little bit. So I want to do the branch that's coming out. So once you're happy with the pine needles, the next step we're going to do is add in the branch that we have here. So I'm gonna give my detail round brush a nice little rinse. And then we're going to make that color of the twig that's holding up these pine needles. So I just gave my palette knife a nice little um, wipe. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of that raw umber and then we're going to grab that sienna, mix it together so you get this really nice earthy brown. Okay, and then we're going to add some of that, that yellow ochre in there as well. Lighten that up a little bit. Okay, I'm liking that. So you're gonna grab your detail brush, grab that, that color you just made, and then we're just gonna make a line. But we're not gonna do like a straight line, it's gonna have some breaks to it because we wanna give the appearance that this branch is kind of encased in a little bit of shadow. So I don't want to represent the whole thing, really. I'm 
like so. Then you'll notice that there's caps. So we're just gonna add just little strokes of that brown onto the tippy top of our cones. And here, just wanna make this a little thicker. And there's some caps here. There's a little cap here, a little cap here, and a little cap right there as well. Then once you have that, give your brush a rinse. We're gonna go back in to do those those uh, additional pine needles that are on the branch itself. So we're gonna go back to that green we made for the needles. And you're just gonna add in those lines coming out from the stem. And I'm kind of overlapping the needle lines Looking like it's somewhat, you know, covering parts of the stem of the branch itself. And I can always go over what we did before. The green, just for this solidify that color. Oh, that is perfection. That's looking really pretty. And then I'm just going to add some more closing details. All these branches. Okay. Lastly, I want to add just some little highlights here and there. So I'm going to grab some of that white. I'm gonna use some of that green we were using for the needles. So it's like a really, really um, light version of that green. And just with a couple strokes, I'm only gonna add some to um, just some portions, not everywhere on the pine needle itself. But some here and there. I'm just kind of going on the outskirts a little bit, maybe some on the inside portion. 
Okay. I think that's crazy. Just a little bit. And it helps give it a little bit more of like a bushier look. But it also like helps to add, add additional contrast. And I'm really barely touching the canvas with my brush. Like I'm just using little strokes Just to help me, just help me get that color conveyed. I wanted to overtake everything, though. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with this. <laughs> this is looking really cool. You didn't really have to worry about shadows at all because the background kind of did that for you. So that's a super plus in my book. The less work, the better. And just like that, queen bees, we are done with our pine needle painting. I hope you enjoyed following along with me. And if you did like this tutorial, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. You know what to do so that you can see more fun tutorials from me to you in the future. And remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your art. I'll see you all next time. Bye.